All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. We're continuing concepts and principles with positive and negative reinforcement contingencies. This is the first video on one of our principles, that being reinforcement. And as we know, reinforcement increases behavior. It's a consequence that follows a behavior which causes the behavior to increase in the future. And with consequences, we're always focused on how does the behavior change? If the behavior increases in the future, we know the consequence was reinforcing. So in this video, we're going to talk about both positive and negative reinforcement. Not a difficult topic, but obviously an extremely important one because reinforcement is what we're going to be dealing with most of the time with behavior change. So as always, please like and subscribe for all of our videos. We post three BCBA videos weekly, plus our RBT videos. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. So reinforcement is the primary method used to increase behavior and apply behavior analysis. If we think about our contingency, antecedent, behavior, consequence, we're talking about the consequence. Reinforcement is a consequence that increases behavior, whether that's added or taken away. Always remember when you have a consequence question or you're thinking about consequences, you have to think about what behavior are we looking at? And how is it changing? And then we think about positive and negative. Traditionally, negative reinforcement is thought of as a bad thing, but in behavior analysis and behavior science, negative just means the removal. So positive, something is added. Negative, something is taken away. So the addition or removal of a stimulus as a consequence following a behavior or response. Reinforcement consequence, consequences will always increase behavior or else it is not reinforcement. If the behavior doesn't change or the behavior decreases, especially if the behavior decreases, we are not looking at reinforcement. So let's think about positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement occurs when a behavior is followed by the presentation of a stimulus that makes the behavior more likely to happen again. So you have an antecedent, a behavior occurs, and then a consequence is added, which increases behavior. A positive reinforcement is all, reinforcer is often a desired or wanted stimulus but remember, it doesn't have to be because we're not necessarily concerned with the topography or the preference. We're just looking at how does that consequence change behavior? Now, when we do preference assessments and reinforcer assessments, yes, we are looking at what the person will likely want or desire, but we're going to use anything that's going to increase the behavior as reinforcement. If the consequence stimulus is added and increased behavior, it is reinforcement. We're going to keep on reiterating that so we think about that every time we think about consequences. Is the behavior increase or is it decreasing? Is the stimulus added or taken away? So a pretty easy example, a child receives a sticker right after saying please, increasing polite requests in the future. The, the please is our behavior and the sticker is the consequence that was added and increased future behavior. Always looking at future behavior with consequences. Negative reinforcement, a little more tricky sometimes, but still it is a consequence that follows a behavior and it's the removal of the stimulus that makes the behavior more likely to happen again. So we have antecedent behavior, consequence, removal, that increases behavior. A negative reinforcer is often undesired or aversive, and that's going to be typical, but remember, we're looking at how does the behavior change. And so since typically negative reinforcers are undesired or aversive, it's associated with escape avoidance. Think about when you, let's say, give a worksheet to a client, that client falls on the floor. If you take away the task demand, so you remove the task demand, and in the future, they continue to fall on the floor, that's going to be escape avoidance, and it's going to be negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement in a nutshell. Or 
you get stung by a mosquito, you put itch cream on the mosquito bite. If the itch goes away, well, you have successfully removed the itch, right? The removal of the itch increases putting itch cream on in the future. And what you've got to remember is you've got to be very precise about what is your behavior and what is your consequence, right? Putting the itch cream is the behavior, not the consequence. We're not, the, the, the consequence isn't the addition of the itch cream. The consequence is the removal of the itch. So when you're looking at your negative reinforcement, be very precise about what's my behavior, what's my consequence. So the main difference is whether a stimulus is introduced, which is going to be positive, or taken away, which is going to be negative. But both increase behavior. Reinforcement will always increase behavior. We always want to try and use reinforcement contingencies before punishment contingencies. We are basing our treatment on reinforcement first. We then use punishment if we have to, right? We use differential reinforcement all the time, which naturally involves extinction. But before we ever jump to punishment, we really want to try to use reinforcement. Is it always possible? Of course not. There are situations where punishment is necessary and required as a first option. But at most points, we want to try to use reinforcement before punishment. And again, to summarize, to finish, the goal of reinforcement is to increase behavior. If you have a contingency, ABC, and your behavior is not changing, well, you're not reinforcing. You've got to think about that. Just because you think you're providing reinforcement doesn't mean you are. How is that behavior changing in the future? All right, thanks for watching. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. Please like and subscribe for all of our future updates. We have three BCBA videos a week, plus RBT videos as well. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.